Hi, this is Yahoo Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of Tier 4 Let's Talk. And today we have with us Lucas again, Lucas Gently, uh, founder and CEO of Loft Lab. Lucas, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, thank you so much for the invite, Swapnil. We were supposed to meet at KubeCon and do this in person. And I don't think that we have even seen each other in person. So, uh, But unfortunately, that did not happen due to some flight changes. Uh, you were at KubeCon, as you, you know, and uh, the energy was different uh, as compared to the previous one. Folks are coming out of COVID. Uh, companies were happy with the kind of turnout. But what was your experience? What kind of, you know, uh, energy you saw there? And um, what kind of audience was there? Yeah, I think it was exciting to see uh, Valencia, you know, KubeCon getting back to uh, its, you know, pre-pandemic strength. I think, uh, you know, we we attended LA as well. And, you know, although I gave a talk there and it was quite busy at the booth after that talk and we still got a lot of traction out of, out of KubeCon North, North America, the vibe was obviously completely different, right? Valencia, it felt like, uh, you know, people are really meeting again. Uh, you know, you saw a lot of, I mean, obviously, you know, there were things in place like the mask mandate and the health checkups uh, on, on the entrance, all these things that are important to, you know, keep people safe. Um, but it's so great to see that people actually meet in person again. Uh, for us, the conference was a huge success. It was also a great opportunity for our team to get together. You know, we're fully distributed. So a lot of our team members have seen each other for the first time in person, you know, other than uh, Zoom and Slack. So obviously that's a really important event for us, you know, from a you know company culture perspective as well. What kind of you know, folks that you see, I have been hearing that this time, there are a lot of, you know, developers, DevOps, uh, SREs were there. So what kind of folks you came across? Uh, but the reason I'm asking is, is to see the evolution of you know, CNC of Kubernetes ecosystem as well from the early days to today? Yeah, I think we, we've seen a lot of end users uh, come by the booth. Uh, so compared to uh, LA, it was uh, a lot less vendors and more end users, which is really great to see because ultimately, you know, we're not building technology for the sake of building technology, but actually to solve problems in these enterprises out there. And uh, yeah, we, I mean, we're pretty enterprise focused at this point. So obviously we saw a lot of uh, uh, folks from larger companies uh, come by our booth, uh, being interested in the, you know, cost saving benefits that uh, vCluster can provide. Uh, and then the, the, the management uh, layer that Loft adds on top uh, in terms of, you know, audit logging, single sign on and all these features that, uh, that help them manage vCluster at scale. And um, yeah, we, we saw a lot of buzz uh, around vCluster. It was, it was, you know, so surprising. It came up in so many conversations. Uh, but yeah, we saw a whole variety of folks uh, attend KubeCon and that was really great to see. Also a lot of, you know, folks that you've seen from Twitter, right? <laughs> people that have done uh, previous videos about one of our open source projects, you know, finally seeing them in person was a lot of fun as well. Sometimes you were like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize you're so tall, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's surprising because you can't ever tell on, uh, you know, on camera. But more thing that, you know, as you're saying, you know, the folks were turning in. Uh, and this is also kind of first, not first time, uh, but kind of after a long gap that you are actually talking to a lot of customers who are using. Uh, what, what, I mean, what were you hearing from them about Loft Lab, you know, that where it helped them, where they're using it? Because, you know, that's the best feedback you can receive or commentary or comment you can receive from folks who are using it. Yeah, absolutely. There were so many people coming by. Uh, there were actually people sending me messages on Twitter, uh, like, hey, I can't find you. <laughs> Can we meet at the booth? It was so busy. I probably shook like a thousand hands <laughs> within the, you know, four or five days uh, of the conference. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been really great to see these customers uh, in person. Some of them already uh, told me that they're going to submit a talk uh, for KubeCon Q- North America. The, you know, the deadline uh, has just passed. And, um, you know, at KubeCon, they, they it was still ahead of us, right? And they were like, yeah, yeah there's going to be the uh, submission deadline in two weeks. We're already working on a talk proposal. And I'm like, oh, that's so great, <laughs> right? Uh, to get these actual, you know, to get these case studies and success stories out there is so important for us. So. Yeah, definitely stay tuned for KubeCon North America. I hope some of the submissions will actually uh, make it through the committee. I know it's always really hard to get a talk in, into KubeCon, um, 
so I, I you know wish our customers uh, the best of luck to actually get their, get their talks in and be a speaker at the conference. It would be fantastic to see. Very much looking forward to you know one of these talks actually happening. What were the common themes? What are the trends you you saw? Like I do remember before the COVID happened, a lot of focus was shifting towards security because things were maturing. Kubernetes was being used in production. Uh, this time, wh wh where did you see things were there? Because folks are now not only using in production, but they're actually coming across the two challenges, which are bigger than, you know, just getting started with the project. Yeah, I think cost is an ongoing uh, issue that, that comes up. Um, I think there's a new foundation uh, that has been built around this as well. Um, and I think, you know, KubeCost is, uh, is a company that is driving a lot of the progress in the space. Um, we're catching up with them pretty regularly as well. Obviously, we met them at, at KubeCon again to, you know, uh, see what we can do together in the future. I think they're also open sourced uh, a new open source project recently. I think definitely the, the you know, cost optimization part of the day of two op uh, the day two operations is, is a really big uh, issue right now uh, in the space. And then multi-tenancy uh, continues to be uh, a big topic as well. And like you said, uh, that touches uh, definitely in the security space, right? How can you, uh, you know, instead of provisioning a thousand Kubernetes clusters, uh, how can you actually split up workloads and kind of, you know, um, have them run alongside each other in a secure way in a shared Kubernetes cluster? That kind of multi-tenancy, uh, how do you host multiple tenants, multiple teams in the same cluster? That's, a, that's an ongoing challenge. And I think we're going to see a lot more um, you know, solutions in that space come up. I think with vCluster, we are kind of, you know, uh, having a head start and an early contribution to that space, but I hope there will be a lot more solutions uh, evolving in this in this area. And today, once again, we are going to talk about vCluster. We have covered it earlier as well, but it's always good to refresh memories of our viewers. Tell us quickly what it's all about. Yeah, vCluster lets you spin up our virtual Kubernetes clusters. It's the only certified Kubernetes distro that allows you to spin up virtual Kubernetes clusters. That means clusters that run on top of other clusters. So you can spin up a cluster in bare metal or in Google Cloud or AWS. And then inside of the namespaces of that cluster, you can launch you know, other clusters that run inside containers. And those are virtual clusters. Perfect. And I'm also, I've also been thinking about you know, a kind of a segment of this show where we just focus on problem so i'm thinking of name you know what's the problem you know so so if i ask you that what was the problem that you saw in the space that you're trying to solve that led to creation of the cluster so let's let's look at the pain points that developers or operators or devops face yeah if you are thinking about you know handing out kubernetes uh, to your engineers there are essentially two options that you have today you can either you know, create a thousand Kubernetes clusters and then hand one of them out to each engineer if you want to you know, make Kubernetes available to a thousand engineers, or you can create you know, one or maybe two or three giant clusters and then have you know, 100 or 200 people share a cluster. Both of these approaches are really not great because when you're creating these uh, large amount of clusters, you know, one cluster for each team or one cluster for each developer, and a lot of companies are actually doing that, you know, it sounds really crazy because it's really, really expensive and really hard to manage, but a lot of companies that we meet are actually doing that. And the other extreme, you know, sharing clusters um, is really, really hard. You know, it's really hard to set that up for the IT teams who have to manage these clusters, there's a lot of responsibility, you know, because if a cluster goes down, you know, 400 people can't work anymore, you know, it's pretty crazy to have to isolate these users. And then for each individual user, because you have to restrict them so hard to make sure that these clusters are always up and running, you take a lot of their freedom away. And that really hurts developer experience. For virtual cluster, we created a technology that sits in the middle. You kind of get the best of both worlds. You can share a cluster, but you can share it in a way that is much easier to set up for the IT teams, much easier to manage for the IT teams at scale. And it has a really great developer experience because inside the cluster, you know, a user, they're they're complete admin, right? They can do whatever they want, but they're actually really restricted because they're actually just sharing a cluster. But inside their virtual cluster, they have complete freedom. And because we run all of this in the same underlying Kubernetes cluster, right? 
it's much, much cheaper, much more efficient. Uh, companies really save, you know, 70 to 80 percent of infrastructure cost by using vCluster. And obviously, you know, especially in times like these where everybody's looking more at, you know, reducing cost, that's a huge benefit. You folks, you know, recently released the Cluster API provider for vCluster. Uh, you know, first of all, talk a bit about, you know, uh, what, what it is and what, going back to the theme of our discussion is what problem it solves and how does it solve it? Yeah, we're actually always surprised, you know, where vCluster uh, already is today. You know, we went uh, at KubeCon to uh, the VMware booth and saw that they're running a lot of their demos based on vCluster, which is, uh, you know, we didn't even know about this. It's pretty crazy. And what we hear a lot from these users is that the management of virtual clusters um, is, uh, you know, not as streamlined as the management of real clusters. There is a, you know, Kubernetes initiative, Kubernetes project called Cluster API, which essentially standardizes how to manage the life cycle of a Kubernetes cluster. It's a standardized way of how do you spin up a cluster independent of the underlying cl cloud platform? How do you define what a cluster is? How do you upgrade it? How do you manage an entire cluster lifecycle? That's what Cluster API is really uh, all about. And with our Cluster API provider that we published, we now allow people to you know, manage uh, virtual clusters the same way as they can manage a real Kubernetes cluster. And that really helps um, a lot of these um, folks who run uh, you know, 100 plus or even thousands of virtual clusters already. Um, and it really helps them to integrate it as well into existing solutions. You know, there's products like uh, Rancher and OpenShift uh, and many others, you know, that have integrations with Cluster API. Um, and obviously we hope that uh, we can bring vCluster uh, to these uh, platforms as well. As you're saying, you know, at KubeCon, there are a lot of folks, they were using it without you knowing. Can you share, you know, either the name or what kind of folks uh, you know, uh, are using uh, API clusters. Sorry, cluster API. Uh, yeah, cluster uh, API provider for vCluster is really new, so I don't expect anyone to use it in production quite yet. Uh, we just, you know, shipped it 10 days ago <laughs> at KubeCon, so it's fairly new, but um, there are a lot of people who are using uh, vCluster already in production. Um, actually, uh, CodeFresh, uh, you know, just announced a new product uh, at KubeCon as well. And that new product is running entirely on vCluster. Uh, it's really exciting to uh, see that they, you know, they bring Argo CD as a managed solution to their customers based on vCluster. And obviously, you know, using Cluster API in the future for them uh, will hopefully make that process of, you know, spinning up all these virtual clusters for their customers uh, even easier than it is today. And what's in there for Loft Lab, you know, uh with you know we cluster you know what value are you getting or because when you talk about open source we always talk about commercialization should be there that's what makes it sustainable yeah definitely i think uh we're definitely profiting a lot from all the bus that's uh going on around we cluster you know um we don't necessarily capitalize directly on v cluster because really v cluster is its own project it's independent from our commercial product and we want vCluster to thrive. And ultimately, we also want to donate it uh, to CNCF. Uh, it's a little bit too early for that. We still need to grow out the community. We still need to mature the project a little bit more. Uh, but that is the ultimate goal. Um, however, you know, I think you know, we've seen great success in companies um, like uh, Styra with Open Policy Agent, you know, become a de facto standard by essentially uh, you know, having this independent open source project, handing it over to CNCF and making sure you're supporting the project, you're working on the project, um, but not necessarily adding any kind of, you know, feature gates or, you know, forcing people to upgrade to the enterprise version. If you're looking at what they did, they essentially have a separate uh, product that makes it then easier to kind of manage at scale uh, that open source project. And we're doing the same thing. Uh, with vCluster, you know, if you're managing virtual clusters, uh, at a certain point, you want certain enterprise uh, guarantees like high availability, you want to, uh, you know, backups and monitoring for these virtual clusters, you want single sign on access to virtual clusters. 
And all of that is what our commercial uh, product offers. And since you're talking about, you know, the project uh, and, you know, the potential contribution to some foundation, can you also talk about uh, the community around the project? You know, if you go to just good GitHub page, you know, uh, it's an active project. A lot of contributions are there. A lot of releases are there, you know. So, but talk about what kind of community is there around it? What kind of community, of course, you cannot control the community. Folks who like the project, they will come and, you know, pitch in. Right. Yeah, pretty exciting. I mean, we're always surprised to see uh, where vCluster pops up. Uh, you know, apparently uh, it's in a lot more companies than we are even aware of. Uh, you know, you don't always know who's behind a certain, you know, GitHub handle when they're opening an issue or opening a pull request. And then later on, uh, you find out, you know, like recently we saw an article by an SRE at Adobe uh, that apparently was working uh, with vCluster internally. and. Actually, when we published uh, our cluster API, API provider, he tweeted, oh, dang, there goes my weekend. You know, I got to have a look at this and how we can leverage this project. It's so exciting to see such a thriving community. Uh, we have over 700 people in our Slack channel right now. Uh, vCluster has over 5 million downloads uh, when you look at the uh, image pulls on, on Docker Hub. Um, it's really impressive the kind of growth that we've seen in the past you know, uh, year since we actually uh, open source we cluster and yeah i hope that trend will continue and just you know further explode as we've seen it uh in the past lucas thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about we cluster uh you know your experience at coupon and as you said you know i look forward to seeing you folks in person and to see actually who is taller <laughs> yeah super excited to see you uh hopefully in person in detroit and you know probably a couple of times in between for you know next couple of product announcements and you know other other interesting things we're going to do in the space that you may want to chat about